you would agree that uh, building something new is always interesting as well as challenging in today's topic let's look at a concept that helps us in building something new maybe a new product or a new service or even a new process we will look at a design approach that not just can help to create a capable process that meets customer specifications but also keep the process means centered at the target always if you have experience in process designing you would have guessed we are talking about something to do with the robust designs today we will go through a concept called taguchi's designs which is very useful in uh, robust design uh, situations uh, situations where factors are too many where noise factors have got significant impact on factors and the output response since you have uh, picked up uh, this video on taguchi's method i would go with an assumption that you are exposed to quality and uh, the operational excellence concepts like six sigma design of uh, experiments etc intent of uh, this video is to introduce you to the concept and its application so what we have done is we have uh, made this tutorial in three parts it would be advisable to go through all the three parts uh, at your pace but in that order so it will make the understanding much much easy for you before we get into the specifics it's important to understand how it helps to spend a good amount of time on new product or process design whenever something new has to be started the how part gains significance how do we start how will we do this you know the people uh, respond to this uh, anxiety in in two ways either they believe in starting light and evolve as they make progress or they believe in getting it uh, right the first time in the first category how to do or how to work guideline comes from the experts through practice trial and error over a period of time process becomes efficient at times in the initial period breakdowns can be there escalations can be there in the second category the experts come together to scientifically design a new process that will meet the requirements of the customers and the business from the beginning it allows to to integrate the best available technology or practice right at the start as all positive and negative effects and uh, their causes are systematically analyzed yes it it consumes time but then it guarantees a satisfied customer efficient way of working doing more with less faster roi and obviously a differentiating uh, brand value so both have their ups and downs and uh, the choice is made by the business based on their priority at that point of time for the purpose of this video we will spend time on the second aspect that is let's try to get it right the first time thinking about the elements of design that make it successful the most important piece is how well we understand our customer and the market what will delight them how will we have to realign our process to always deliver what they need then we have our business which which exists for our customers so in our business what is our vision our goals our customer requirements going to drive a positive change for our business any business is an aggregation of of various business processes if process is reliable then the business outcome would be dependable so what do these customer and business requirements or what we call as ctqs or critical to quality parameters mean for a process what has to change in the process to bring improvements in these ctqs which parameters should change at what level should the process parameters operate these are very important questions for which we need to find answers in our design journey 
Once we are clear about these input parameters, the next important task is to find a quantified relation between what needs to be improved and what needs to be strictly controlled to bring in these improvements. This relation is referred to as the transfer function. Design of experiment, simulation, you know, these techniques are few uh, scientific methods uh, that help in arriving at this transfer function. The next important part is to know the operating limits for the factors that influence the process output Y. Variation and its impact on these factors is uh, studied to assign appropriate limits to these factors within which we need to control them. Even after doing all this, there are certain factors like the environmental factors, the temperature, humidity or, or even uh, the customer usage pattern which we cannot control. But these factors will influence the performance. So we need to minimize the effect of such noise factors. That's when uh, we get an optimal transfer uh, function with the right factor levels that is best for the output parameter. Then the product or the process is designed as per these quantified factors at their optimum. The reliability in performance would flow back to the business and to the customer. Now this is in essence what goes into designing a new process or a product. So to summarize, process design is all about evolving the best transfer function to relate the CTQs or what we call Y with controllable factors or the excess. While process optimization is all about finding the optimum factor levels for peak performance. Let's quickly run through some techniques which are used in process design and optimization. The most common is regression. Commonly, it is used to find a transfer function between Y and Xs or finding the vital Xs that represent the Y or the output response. From a design point of view, one limitation is that it does not confirm causation between Y and Xs. It can be used if experimentation is ruled out and uh, we have to rely on data mining. Design of experiments or DOE is the most precise method to shortlist the factors or excess based on causation and to determine the transfer function between Y and Xs. It, it traditionally uses a series of random experiments conducted at different levels of the factors to model Y as a function of Xs. It being so detailed comes with a huge investment in terms of time, effort and cost. Now once the DOE or the design of experiments uh, provides us with the vital factors plus a model function between Y and Xs and their favorable control levels, we use the optimization designs to find if there are better factor levels of performance for Y or the output response or to determine the best operating levels for the factors. This method is known as response surface method or RSM and uses techniques like ascent descent or simplex for two level optimization or a central composite or a box benkin for a three level optimization. But when the need is to have a process so robust that the process mean not just stays within the specifications but also is always centered at the target. Taguchi's designs are very useful. The underlying belief in this approach is that every time a process moves away from the target, there is loss to customer, even if the process is within the specs. Now this method attains the robust design by modeling not just the controllable factors as we do in conventional uh, design of experiments but also considering the noise factors. We had been uh, talking about these noise factors, what exactly is a noise factor. So 
So let's take an example. Let's say um, we are designing a printer. One of the noise factors would be the paper type. As we do not have any control on the paper type, that will be used by the uh, consumer and it does impact the print quality. So this method allows us to conduct experiments at different levels of the noise variables to factor in their impact and then accordingly design the product.